Always loved oscillation, always loved sudden appearances of stasis, always loved vibrating, always loved sharing my vibrations with others, always loved disappearing into a cocoon, always loved reappearing after a long stay in a cocoon, always loved inviting you into my cocoon, always loved the total surrender we experienced together when we were in my cocoon, always loved the hallucinations we fostered in each other. Never loved baseball, never loved tennis, never loved volleyball, never loved basketball, never loved boxing, always loved vanishing. Elliot Gould trained to nowhere, Elliot Gould trained in my heart. Elliot Gould train to my heart. Elliot Gould train to nowhere. Elliot Gould train to my heart. Elliot Gould train to nightlife. Elliot Gould train to my heart. Elliot Gould the train to my heart. Elliot Gould train to nowhere or anywhere. Elliot Gould, what are you doing tonight? Elliot Gould, what are you doing? Elliot Gould, what are you doing? Elliot Gould, will you help me find a way out of this D-dilemma? Elliot Gould, train in my heart. Elliot Gould, train to nowhere. just saw a picture of three pink bubbles lined up, and I imagined that they were three buttocks. So I thought, why not do a waltz? The waltz of the three buttocks lined up. Where is Repound? Denigrated everybody because he said, you can't say dim fields of peace, just dim fields. No. That reminds me of when I was 11. I went to San Francisco to see Ruby Keeler return to the stage in No No Nanette singing. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till you are happy too. Take a little one step, two step, three step, then a little kick like this. That's the step you can't afford to miss. Hello, this is Joan LaBarbera. I'm delighted to be joining the Poetry Projects Marathon um, once again. I wish we could all be here in person, but hopefully next year. Um, when I was thinking about what work I wanted to perform uh, today, um, I decided on a work that I created in 2007 called Tanta Song. It was created at the request of Jane Comfort, with whom I was collaborating on a spoken word opera called An American Rendition. Um, the work was certainly a political piece, uh, as the title suggests. It dealt with the kidnapping and uh, torture of an American citizen in an undisclosed location. Uh, of course, it was our, our fictional um, depiction of this. But Jane asked me to create um, a song that would exemplify the safe place that a person um, to whom this was being done could escape the horrible things that were happening. And so I created Tanta's song as a lullaby that I imagined uh, could have been a song that the grandmother or the caretaker uh, would have sung um, to a child, holding and rocking the child. So here now is Tanta's song. Mm-hmm. 
a little comfort for the new year. And I hope 2021 is a better year for all of us. Oh, I should mention the painting in the background is by Tony Martin. It's one of my favorites, um, and it hangs in my living room. So all best of luck and warmest wishes for the new year. Lost dance, words, people, energies, somewhere in there, that that punctuation, recovery, my spoken, moving, never, never play something else again, still, somewhere, and will, will be our own grammar, structure, you, you more so life to starting, starting with say, say power, just line up, granted shows for, for not intentional taken before enough, can one, one structure get not, not voice, full scap, rush, would like, like local food issue call to be, be what? Wherever the, 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 the night dreams, writing harbor, wall, refugees, portraits, palais, exile, bars, history, space, space, Faxed, sighting, history, ground, crossing, spiral, attraction, sail, gratitude, water, curtain, watch, metro, clocks, proposals, sights, unseen, onlookers, stories of, on, beyond, of, from, between, of, of, and, uh, on in another racing slow lost uh, run is be told sold am want touch will take is life's offering will take birthday blessing earth's i lost the my middle my today their last the final the last humans i i my empty in of love with friends when i it if like was saw were filled rising billowing Blooming, smoke, flames, smoke, hilltops, ridge, sky, inevitable, visible, shimmering, pinks, purples, browns, off, not for gone. It, where, which, from, of, of, from and ones which has belonging track feeling carrying the the ships learns something about departing kept simply sailed fastest eternal mail and and land when we have said that it it transmitted is only which does which movements upon those is placed influences which the office of the body be, between objects a conductor receives and acts to 
to them and not arrest them. Hard clock hour. Did I get drunk instead of logging time at the keyboard? Neaten my nails to write, neaten my clothes, straighten shoes, roll up the rug. Season the beans, season the room, the desk lamp, the line of pins, the tangle of paper clips, and the lion's breath seasons the broth. I put my face on and began to write. The lion's fallen hairs became felt and made a useful hat. The lion's paws warm my shoulders like a weighted blanket, and the lion's snore a lullaby. The purr of the lion's pleasure pleases me. The lion has its own room and its own meat. It wears a red coat in cold rain and greets me at the door. Nudges, rubbing nose against my human legs. A truce between us. We had come to accept each other, both locked inside a pleasant enough house. But we want out, and we push at the cracks, push at the trap, like the little mouse who made itself even littler who banged and banged against metal and squeezed out in reverse, fled the trap of the unknown with only its nose for a guide, the nose that led it into the trap, trap of kindness. Notes for a tea. Take them a cake or fruit on a stick. I eat out of the jar and scrape the skin of an orange and take my time to read handwritten notes posted on the wall. Be kind, they said, sticking their signs on the lawn. Be nice or leave, said the bartender, and I spit on all the paper and napkins, but I'm always kind to the cashier. In the woods, I built an altar, not like in church, more like in nature or in head shop. I carefully placed rolling papers and a glass pipe in harmony. There are teas for sleeping, and some teas will bring you wealth. Would you drink a tea for true love? Do you like or make potions? I collect bits of paper, cast rune stones, read cards, and lay out my best silk. To my love and my beloveds, be kind and be akin, be righteous, be soft and be firm. Be pleased with yourself. Inside of our kindness, which we wore as garments, as in tunics, not jumpers or dresses, our cups overflow with coins our love invented an animal. Houses. I woke up and saw that my hands had become small chairs. I sat on them and fractured the left and the right. My hands were small chairs. I painted them in rainbow colors. Imagine this, after dinner, my hands became tables. I placed several art books upon them and then a reading lamp. My eyes became eggs and fit comfortably inside my sockets. My sockets could have been egg cartons for all that it mattered. My tables became houses, and we, my partner and I, moved in. Happy New Year. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to read from a collaboration that Kathleen Frazier, my dear friend, and I did, uh, and that was published by Further Other Bookworks, very beautifully. Um, we're responding to a little tourist pamphlet, booklet, uh, that was promoting Japan after World War II. I'm going to read... Uh, one of the pieces I wrote first. Here is the image that it goes with. Okay. This image is alive with my longing for you. When I close my eyes, I see you in lewd positions, which are units of longing, as tenderly pro programmatic as Sunday for the boaters and children. I am often bitter and lazy. Stasis dressed as time, a prince in disguise, 
gives me the present like a glittering trinket draped on an orchid in a backstage comedy. Night shines inside like reaching music. I am grateful for the present. Problems remain unsolved, but they subside in the photo, temporal. The slanted sunlight falls on the big pine for a few hours of oration. Odor of hemp and grilled hot dogs. I wish but can't interpret. I miss you, though you are with me. That is, each person and thing is aroused and lonely because we consent to time. For a few hours the mood holds. We call to each other from the boats, get a little drunk, make barking sounds. When I drink, it's like a crowd surrounds me. Then here is one by Kathleen. Kathleen died a year ago in February. And hers is in response, kind of a similar one, to this. And she says, I am taken on a boat ride, boat, whoop, I am taken on a boat just wide enough for myself and the boatman, unless we should encounter your party at one of the crossways. Then I would wave to you, hoping to separate you from commerce and, moder and modernity, indicating another seat in the boat. Can you feel a drifting like sleep, reshaping the first idea we were given when they sent us here? While I am not alarmed, I wish to compare these recent days and the views of water so amply restored to each morning's rising. A certain formality beckons and forbids. Blue shines up from between the rafts. I watch the backs of the polemen pushing their load to the next town. They call out to my boatman, wave a fish and laugh and beckon to us. Their bare toes curve around the wood. No buildings for miles now, only shoals of rock and shapely dropping embarkments, leading in no direction I recognize. I look back, thinking of our first meeting, and the later dream, where you were a woman and I was a man. Now that we have exchanged boundaries and blood types, it is easier. If I do not see you at the impasse, I will understand your message and return to the hotel lobby. Thank you, and Happy New Year, I hope. Thanks. Hi, my name is Bennett Bergman. Uh, I'm a poet living in New York. Very happy, honored to be um, invited to take part in this tradition and um, Happy New Year to everybody. I'm, I'm going to read just three short poems. Uh, this first one is called This Time with Feeling. It isn't Nebraska, but it seems like what Nebraska might be about February. Even the birds are drunk. They make it on fermented berries. You take your car to the shop. The man at the counter, named John, looks under your hood and tells you all you have got is what you have not got. You pay him for his services. You have it in green, but you want it in blue. A certain shirt. For eleven dollars, just think about it. How the postal service could deliver it to you. 
days from now, you would get a feeling like the one brick wall of hospital that is visible from the window of your kitchen being struck into color by sun. The cover-up. I have begun to suspect myself in a cover-up of something. As a first measure, I sealed off all the exits. Then I banned from the household anything I thought I might be able to use to create a diversion. That included almost all the daily forms of pleasure. No drinking, no smoking, no drugs, and no TV. Now I am reading that social media causes a release of dopamine, so I ban that. Masturbation was banned for a while too, then was unbanned with the provision that pornography would be banned in its place, so that I would have to do it the organic way. I lie alone on the carpet. I say, now I have got you. Uh, last poem uh, is called Singing Dog Poem. On the fishing trip, Cyril could barely read a map. Watching him struggle with it in the front of the canoe, I fell in love with him very briefly over the idea of a mind that wouldn't convert the world into images and the trouble I would not have then. Reimagine the whole trip with me going to sleep night after night feeling at peace with the world for the way it moved the pine needles on their trees. Instead, life, the cartoon where lifting masks off the heads of villains we keep discovering under each one yet another with the same face. As for the dog, she belonged to my friend, a little hound who sat between us in the canoe and watched me bludgeon a fish to death against the aluminum side when I couldn't find my knife. On the drive home, the dog sat in the back seat and sang with something so much like soul when Cyril put Beethoven on the car stereo that I believe she was moved by it, that those strings sounded to her like the only mating call that ever was, like the skies were just opening right up, horns to herald the end of work, of every chase, the body's needs, as though when I asked if it is wrong to say the earth is just the earth, there came an answer. Thank you. I grew up in the 70s in the middle of nowhere in the country of Argentina. So being trans was something that nobody talked about it and nobody knew what it was. And I pretty much grew up thinking that I was either crazy or I also thought for a long time that I was an extraterrestrial. Regardless, I grew up, I made it. I went through the painful years of being a child and then being an adolescent until I made it to 17 and I got out of that little city and I went to the big city to go to college. And I loved it. I went to the big city and I met other people and I met gay people and then it happened. I met the first trans person I ever met in my life. 
she was an amazingly beautiful trans woman. She looked like a human Barbie. Her body was a Coca-Cola bottle. Her hair was super long and beautiful. And I just loved her. And I went to her and I said, please help me. I want to be like you. Please, please help me. I want to be like you. Boobs, boobs. I want boobs. How do I get your boobs? I want your boobs. And she says, stop, girl. You're annoying me. And you are just so annoying stop what do you want and I say I just want you to help me I want to be like you and she said okay I can help you but now I'm working and my clients are looking at you and they think that you're crazy so you need to get the fuck away from here so go to that bar in the corner and wait for me and I went to that bar for the first time and I found a whole different world with like queer people and trans people and drunk people and drugged people and drug dealers and like craziness and I fucking loved it so she came to the bar around 6 a.m and she helped me and she says okay if you want to do this we are going to have to work really hard, bitch, because you look hard as fuck. So she started giving me hormones and she started helping me with my clothes and my hair choices and my makeup and all that faggotry that I love even now after 30 years. And I started going to that bar and it was my opportunity to be who I really was and to uh, experience my most authentic self. And I was going there every day. The bar was active on Thursday night, a little bit. Friday nights was big. Saturday night was crazy. Sunday nights was only people who survived Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So no many. But for me, it was the only opportunity to have fun. So I would go every day. I would go there Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And it was just me sitting on a dress with a lot of makeup and drinking a Coca-Cola. And one of those Tuesdays, I was sitting there waiting and the door opened. And there he was. Oh super skinny, tall, brown skin, long, straight hair, and a smile full of teeth. And I look at him and I thought, wow, that's the man I'm looking for. That's the man I need. That's my man. I am securing this dude right now. To make it even better, I look at his arms, they were huge. And not only that, one of them was fully tattooed. He had that arm fully tattooed. And I thought like, look at my man. He's not only beautiful, but he's strong. He can take pain. He is a bad ass. To make things even better, I noticed that he was holding a Polaroid camera from his neck. It was hanging. And I thought, look at my man. He's not only beautiful, he's also a badass. And he's a sensitive artist trying to capture images of history to contemplate and look through the ears. I, this is the winner. This is it. This is him. I love him. And check this out. He walked to me and say, hi. And I look at him and I said, hi. And he said, can I sit next to you? And I said, mm, I don't know. Um, um, sure, it's okay. And he sat next to me and he started telling me how beautiful I was. And he started touching my hair 
and talking about how beautiful my hair was. And he started touching my skin and telling me how soft my skin was. And this was the first time that I got all those compliments, feeling that I was attractive and that somebody felt like I was it. And I felt like it. And I thought, oh, this is wonderful. I got the man of my life. I got, I, I, I started imagining growing old with him. And I started imagining how am I going to introduce him to my parents? Are they going to even understand? A dude with tattoos and long hair is going to be hard, but I'll do it. I'll do it because I love him and he loves me and he thinks I'm beautiful and he thinks my skin is soft and he likes my hair. And I said, oh, Maybe he doesn't know. So then I faced for the first time the difficult moment of disclosing. So I look at him and I said, well, it's something I have to tell you. And he says, what is that? Well, I'm a transsexual. And he looked at me and he said, oh, I didn't know that. But I don't care. You're such a beautiful girl. I want to be with you. I really, really want to be with you. And I thought like, yes, we can be together forever. And he said, let's just take it one step at a time. Let's try to find some intimacy. And I said, what is that? What do you want to do? And then he offered to go to the bathroom. I thought it was a little bit off, but, you know, I was in love. So I went with him to the bathroom. Nasty ass fuck, urine all over the floor, no light, a smell of death. But I was with my man. I was with my beautiful, bad ass, sensitive man in a small room, just me and him. And he started kissing me and, and kissing me and kissing me. And it was like, oh. He's such a good kisser. I'm a sucker for a good kiss, you know. So next thing you know, he pulled down his zipper and pulls out this humongous dick. I mean, I have never seen in my life up to now a bigger dick than that. That was the biggest cock I ever ever encountered through my whole life. And I held that dick that was actually flaccid on my hand. And I don't know if you ever held like a small cat in your hand. That would be kind of the feeling. And I was like, ooh, this is big. And you know, it was the end of the 90s. And I looked down at that dick and I saw a little stain on it, like a, like a dark, like something dark on it. And you know, end of the 80s, like HIV and AIDS and all of that. And I thought like, oh, um, honey, what is that? And he said, oh, you could only find out what it is if it grows. And I said, how do I make it grow? And he's like, well, you're going to have to find a way. So I went down on my knees and I started sucking that dick and I started sucking it. Right? And I started growing. And I started growing. And I pulled my mouth out of the dick and I got up and I looked down and a ray of light came down to that dick and I saw what it was, a tattoo of Jesus Christ on his dick. The full body of Jesus Christ. I mean, that dick was so hard that it was even space to get rays of light coming from behind his body. And Jesus Christ was like in that position when he gives you the absolution, you know, with the index uh, finger uh, putting up like this. And I thought, oh, oh my God. And he said, exactly. And I said, that must be really painful.
painful. And he's like, Jesus Christ is never painful, honey. And he said, are you ready to receive Jesus Christ inside of you? And you know, I have always been an atheist, but that was a close call. I really needed to feel how Jesus Christ felt in my body. So I turn around and he uh, moved into the next step of fucking me. And Jesus Christ inside me felt painful. That was a lot. And he, but you know, I had to keep my man happy. He was the man of my life. We were gonna grow old together. And he started fucking me and fucking me and fucking me and fucking me. And in a moment I said, honey, you have to come. Honey, you have to come. And he said, do you mind if I take a picture of this magical moment right now? And I said, it's okay, as long as you come. So next thing you know, I hear <laughs> the Polaroid coming out and he started like moving the Polaroid to dry it while he was fucking me and he showed it to me and I saw the head of Jesus Christ almost inside my body and I said this is beautiful honey we will keep it forever to show to our children and he says oh and he came he came, he pulled out and come, started dripping down my legs and it was no paper towel. So I tried to clean myself with my hands and he wasn't very much into the imagery. So he decided to leave and he says, I'll see you outside. And I said, yes, honey, I'll see you outside. And I kept thinking, oh my God, he is the man of my life. And then before he left, he says, one question. And I said, yes. And he said, does this make me gay? And I said, fuck you. You just told me that I'm a girl. If I'm a girl, this doesn't make you gay, right? I believe that if I had a dollar every time I was asked that through my life, I would be a rich girl. But that was the first time. And I said, no, honey, we are straight he left and I cleaned myself as I could and I put some makeup uh, you know retouched my lipstick and I came out looking for him and he wasn't there and I said maybe he's smoking outside and I went outside and he wasn't there and I said maybe he went to the corner store and I waited for him and he didn't come back and I never saw him again. And that was my first disillusion with men. And I experienced so many through my life, but it helped me make a decision. It helped me go to that corner and pull my first trick because I decided that if all these men wanted to fuck me, I may as well make some money with it. My name is Fred Moten. I'm going to read two poems from B. Jenkins. Michael Hanchard. Don't go here. They jam a broken axe. But that's up in my works in this. Animate business. Her cafe. Her foe. His breath. My city tunesters won't come here. On certainty's cool, relaxing harness. The multiply organized constraint of the set is inoperative as the life of the party. Mess means set, party, cookable bunch, caster, canter, stuff, my thing, my skills, my shit, the shit. I never knew you. I never knew you had such pretty hair, the unelected corner said, for the love of turning in the shadow of Kermesse. 
The unelected corner breathed in modern blackness. The spare, luxurious spray of the 13th commune. Afro-blacks, black accents, open luminescence of the open roads, black dust. The price is the name of the house party. Flown all over hobo and severe. Bad as it was for pretty boy. Right is how y'all broke against the tragic deputy. Came by the spray and stole some flowers and stole away and can't afford. The runaway ran on my running board and through my diatome. The priceless diatrain is Niccolo, the Afro Spur, De Rorus, Rerum, and my kids to sing your name. Woody Guthrie. Thelma Foot, you are my little fade razor. Your form delights itself in disregard that passes over you like heavy air until you cut it back. The heavy air that brings economies of swale with accident, my little trust maker. Groove against concrete in your shallow depression and every little lovely thing nut brown to lift you up in prayer just to reveal that every limit is so high above, every little thing in love made air. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely in Aloe's Eve with menschling waves of string-curved wood and steel swayed with cool water from sliced rock to the corner auto dance of the old man trap code, quadratic hips in hand to savor the alternate mode and style. Your form is fet with just a little taper made return and turn the long soft, but also to enjoy percussion in a brutal exercise. Membrane and tantrum, slow rubbing like a scene of forms to cut the scene, they said, because I'm in the mood for love. Linden Bear. Esta es Raquel Sada Rivera, leyendo desde Puerto Rico. This is Raquel Sada Rivera, reading from Puerto Rico. Caliban a Shakespeare. De Sicorax, coquíes, cucubanos y luciérnagas, que amaste sapos, escarabajos y luces. Caliban to Shakespeare. By Sicorax, coquíes, cucubanos, and fireflies, which you called frogs, beetles, and lights. Caliban a sus amigos. No tengan miedo. No son ruidos. Son canciones. Caliban to his friends. Don't be afraid. Those aren't noises. They are songs. Whiteness cannot help itself. Whiteness must frame wilderness as threat. Whiteness knows integrity will mean its end. Whiteness thrives only in isolation. Fred Moten said, blacken up an invitation to find the darkness within and hold its horrors to the bosom del tuo essere assuring the void you know it is the space that connects the universe to itself. If your spirit was born into a whiter, brighter, lighter body, reject the sirens luring you out of our dark forest to shipwreck on their civilizing shores, and take good care to shape with language worlds that want to hold us all. 